on Friday, when spring break started, I would go to whatever city he was going to be in and look for and set up an apartment. I had a Chevy Astro van and I had it set up. I knew exactly what size boxes fit in there. And those boxes were also, once you emptied them, you put a sheet over them and those were your end tables. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Married to the Game. You guys know the drill. I'm your host, Maria Martin. All right, we learned a lot from Catherine Wright, didn't we? But I gotta say, what struck me the most was her grace and her just positive outlook on pretty much everything. She had so many great stories to tell and honestly was just such a joy to talk to. But my next guest has over four decades, yeah, four decades worth of stories. And her husband is entering his sixth year as the manager for the Braves. Ronnie Snicker at the plate. She's the wife of all around good dude, Brian Snicker. And obviously just talked about it. He's the manager for the Braves. Ronnie is one of the most down to earth, hilarious and genuine people I seriously have ever talked to. Buckle up, this is a great episode. Here is Ronnie Snicker and this is Married to the Game. First of all, beautiful Christmas tree. I decided okay. to put it up in my kitchen, which don't ask me why I did uh-huh. that. Um, I guess because the middle of the day, this is my best lighting. So uh, this is our, um, that's our, uh, just our regular Christmas tree. So you'll see that there are lots of um, handmade stuff from our oh, kids over the years. Yeah. yeah, I can see. I mean, you don't have to pick up the iPad or anything, but I can see a couple of people back there too. Do you have, yeah. are those the twin boys? Yeah, yeah, that's the twins there. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. cute. And then we have a tree in Brian's office that's a baseball tree. It's oh, cool. all over the years we would get, people would give us decorations, you know, um, and they'd be like baseball themed or whatever. And then we would usually get whatever team we were with that year, we'd get something. It's a, not always a Christmas ornament, but it might've been like something I cut out of the um, program. You know, like that. some kind of little oh, thing. Oh, cool. Or, or I have like the keychains from the minor league cities. You know, they sometimes give those on giveaways. So all of that is on the baseball tree. <laughs> That's a cool way to like incorporate everything, putting it on the tree. I yeah. Well, it was that. just, things got too crowded here. Another <laughs> thing that we put on there, it's kind of our sports tree because um, you know how kids get those buttons, you get those buttons when your kids play little league, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, mom buttons or whatever. Yeah. Well, what do you do with them? I don't know what you I don't do. Know I don't know what everybody else did with them. People say, oh, they're laying in our drawers or whatever. Um, but I put hooks on them and I put those on the Christmas tree. So you can see, you know, That's the years amazing. of stuff. <laughs> oh, I so, love that. And and we, you, you brought up a good point because um, you guys do have a lot of years in baseball. Yeah. I mean, Brian is a baseball lifer. He has been with the Braves organization for over four decades. I do you know, feel like it's, it's been that long? Um. No, <laughs> it's, it's hard to remember all those days. You sure. know, it's, it's hard to remember all of it because it was such a blur of things, you know, so. When did um, you guys meet? Well, we met, he was, had just finished playing um, and he was, uh, he, I heard him say this week, he didn't really interview. Hank Aaron uh, released him and gave him a job coaching. And so the first thing he did was went to um, uh, instructional league. And he was, um, they were kind of grooming him, I guess, to coach or manage. And um, I was teaching school, I'm a speech therapist. And I was teaching school in Bradenton, Florida. And a friend of mine said that she was dating a guy and, um, and she, he, he was a baseball player and he had a really nice roommate. And I said, she said, you should meet him. And I said, mm-hmm, no, first she said, I, he's a really nice guy. You should meet him. And I said, uh, no, I'm not really into that right now. And then she said, he was not a into nice player. guys. Well, the, well, I just wasn't into dating anybody right then. I had just gotten to Florida and, you know, I was thinking about, hanging out on the beach and, sure. you know, meeting blonde haired guys and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but anyway, so she said, she was telling me about, she kept telling me he was such a nice guy. And then, um, and then she told me he was a baseball player. 
And I said, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> not for no. me. I'm not interested at all in that, you know, and, um, but she kept on me and kept on me. And then one day she picked me up and said, come on, we're going, they have dinner for us. And so she had to force you into it. Otherwise you weren't (laughs) going to go. So we went, we went down and, um, and that's how I met him on that kind of a blind date, I guess. Um, and then, you know, after that we dated a little bit and then instructional league was over and he went on and then, um, and then, uh, we talked a little bit and then um, met back up in January and, um, you know, he went on to spring training and we kind of kept in touch and he was in, um, he, they ended up giving him a, manage, a managing job that year and it was in Anderson, South Carolina. Wow. So he was the youngest manager in professional baseball at that point in time. Wow. He was only 26. <laughs> Some of his players were, you know, 18. So they weren't that much younger. That is crazy. So So you really, I mean, you've really been there since the beginning. So how did that, how did that work in the beginning? Because you said you were in Florida. When did you make the transition to start to be full in on the baseball life? You know, it's kind of at the time, uh, and, and I think not so much now, but at the time, a lot of baseball players dated teachers because they had summers off. Makes sense. So um, I went up there to um, Anderson to see what that was like. And I was kind of like, oh, okay, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and then um, in the off season, he came back to Florida because he was um, doing instructional league. And, um, and so then eventually, um, let's see, that was in, I met him in 81 and then in, I think it was November of 80, wait, no, it was spring training of 82. We got engaged. Okay. And then, um, and he went from there to Durham. And um, I, when I finished school, you know, on spring break or whatever, I went up to Durham to visit him. And then in the summer I went up and, um, and, you know, just started kind of, checking out my, my parents are, were like, you better go and see what this is like, because this might be a crazy life. <laughs> I, I don't think they had any idea. I don't think you did either, was. probably, right? <laughs> no. I mean, no. nobody does until you're and, in it, and then you're like, wait, it's too late. <laughs> and then every situation sure. was different. It wasn't like it was going to be what you did for the rest of your life. I mean, I have girlfriends who you know, cook dinner at five o'clock every night. But I couldn't have done any of that. I I couldn't have been. So the changing was good, you know. I I had I had no idea that that you did that that you guys didn't live in the same place. And actually, it's it's really nice to hear because um, just a little backstory about me. My fiance lives in Valdosta right now. And Uh when I got the opportunity to work in Atlanta, it was really a no brainer. I was moving from a really small place in Montgomery, a very, very small television market. So to make this jump was a no brainer for my career. And he's always been incredibly supportive of me, which is great. So Uh we make it work and how we do, I have no idea because we both work crazy schedules and everything's Uh all over the place. So it's nice to hear that it can happen, that you it, guys yeah. made it work. And every year, like I said, it was different because you sure. were going to a different city or whatever. Um, it was a little bit strange too, because, you know, up until I think it was last year, Brian had only had one two-year contract. Yeah. So every year when September came around, you didn't know if you had a job you know, and so that was kind of a little bit crazy. Um, But he, in 1985, uh, Eddie Haas became the manager of the Braves and asked Brian to be his coach. So Brian said, I think we need to move closer, somewhere more, uh, more centralized, because, you know, it was like Durham and Anderson and, you know, place the minor leagues were kind of close around Atlanta not close to Bradenton sure and um so um we got married in 83 then um then in 80 at the end of 84 you know we decided that um we better move up here I was kind of I came kicking and screaming because I grew (laughs) up in Pittsburgh 
Oh, and wow. When I graduated from college, I applied everywhere warm. That was my <laughs> <Sure>. only <laughs> I don't like the cold. I didn't really like the big city. And I thought he was bringing me into, you know, the big city that was cold again. And, you know, and I didn't want to come. But of course, when I got here and I realized there's four seasons and yep. there's so much, I loved it so much better than really Florida. Where there, yeah. And I just got, you know, there was, in Florida, it was the opposite of Pittsburgh. There was never any cold. There was never, you know, they just didn't have any seasons. You oh, know? never. I'm from Florida and my mom this morning, it's 45 degrees and she's like freaking out, bringing out the park as <laughs> the Uggs, you know? I mean, I know my sister cold in her defense, but I get it. I know my sister showed me pictures yesterday of her grandchildren and they live down in Florida and they've got hats with, you know, the ear things that come down and everything. You know, it's of just course. Freezing cold. That's so um, funny. But anyway, so we, I came, we came here in 85 and he was just with the big league team for one year and then, yeah. you know, went back to the minor leagues. So, you know, what every year, what, what I would do would be just wait till we figured out where they were going and then um, try to find a, an apartment or somewhere to live once, you know, we would get there. Once we had kids um, and we, we had them in school, um, it just so happened we were in Gwinnett County and their spring break was always the first week of the season, the first week of the oh minor league gosh. season. So on Friday, when spring break started, I would go to whatever city he was going to be in and look for and set up an apartment. I had a Chevy Astro van and I had it set up. I knew exactly what size boxes fit in there. And those boxes were also, once you emptied them, you put a sheet over them and those were your end tables, you know? <laughs> it was just your what temporary we table. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my so God. So we would just, we, I would go up on Friday and we would, um, we would set up the kids and I would set up and they would usually break camp on Sunday. And then we would spend that first week of the season with him. And then from then till the end of the school year, it was like a six or seven week long time you yeah know? I'm kind of um, putting everything on you really I mean and not intentionally it's just the way that it goes yeah yes. that was just our life yeah so um so and of course then I'd have to deal with it too when he left for spring training I'd take them down there once of course we were in uh West Palm Beach so I'd stick two kids in the car and drive to West Palm Beach from which was that's not a, that's not a <laughs> close drive it's like I'd usually get work. in the car at like eight o'clock at night so that really? the kids would sleep overnight, oh, you know, so I, yeah, to drive. So, um, but anyway, so that, that period of time from, from spring training to the first week of, to, from being in spring training till their spring break wasn't so long, but then from spring break to the end, but we would leave here the day school ended and we'd come back at like midnight the night before it started again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So were you still working this whole time too? Um, yeah. When, when we first got married, I, I had, uh, right before I had kids, I got my master's degree and I went to work at Shepherd Spinal Center because I got a minor in um, research. Awesome. And I started, I, I was doing research at Shepherd Spinal Center. So that, a lot of it I could do from home. Um, I worked from home before working at home. As a matter of fact, I had a modem <laughs> in our house before the internet, you know. Wow. So that's what I said. I used to be the, the techie person, but not, but anymore. not anymore. <laughs> but um, then I, when the kids were little, I went back to the school system because then I was on the same schedule as them, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I worked um, up until they were in high school. Um, you know, I would, so it, we'd have the summers off. We just go wherever he went <laughs> and um, would be at the time. Yeah. And that was such a cool experience for my children because when you go into a minor league city, I don't know if you've ever experienced that at all, but yeah, it, there, there's like a, 
a group of people that go to those games all the time. That's their life. Yes. That's what they do in the summer. They have nothing else to do. Some of them were, you know, small towns where there wasn't really much to do. And so there would be a group of people and, and those people became your family. You know, and we would try to kind of assimilate in. I'd get the kids into the library and the reading groups at the library and, you know, just the stuff around town. Um, and then we got to go on the road with him. Of course, I'd have to drive behind the bus, but like we would go to Huntsville. Wait, they wouldn't let go... you on the bus? <laughs> no. <laughs> they, they sometimes, they would, they would leave, my, let my son go on the bus with his dad. That was, you know. That was kind of crazy. He's he's been raised in a dugout. <laughs> That's where That's he's hilarious. been. Raised. And I, I yeah. mean Troy, right? Are you talking about Troy? Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he's still, and he's in, still a in a dugout. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He's still in a dugout. Yeah. That's <laughs> what he does. Um, yeah. So, um, but we that would be our summer vacations. Is we'd go to Huntsville and go to the Space Museum, or you know, go to Chattanooga and go to the aquarium. You know, wherever he was. You know, whatever town he was in, we kind of follow along behind. So um, it was crazy. You know, it was, it was crazy, but it was, you know, you were always, you know, doing stuff. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's what I say. It's just like, it, I, it's hard for me to explain the coach's wife or manager's wife life to somebody else, except for that it's crazy without a dull moment. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is crazy. And it, you know, like I said, every year is a little bit different. You, you brought up, I didn't want to bring it up, but you brought it up. Um, the fact that Brian has always been on these really small contracts. I mean, it is constantly like a one-year deal or now a two-year deal. What is that like for your family? Because all of a sudden, you know, you're hoping at some point you get something extended so that you have some guarantee, but Right. I'm constantly like, all right, am I going to keep these end tables with the sheet out over? <laughs> <laughs> I think that, um, I think that now, you know, or in the, when he was in the big leagues, but not the manager, um, it was more trying to keep everybody else calm about it, you yeah. know, because it would start, it used to be that it would start like in August, people would say, you know, we don't have a contract. We wonder if we're going to be here the next year. We wonder if we're going to get cut, you know, that kind of stuff. And it would just be like, look, you know, you, you know, just trying to keep them calm about, you know, things will work out, things will work out, you know, but then that kind of hit us in the face when we were, we got back from LA. I don't know what year that was. Um, and, you know, we had just lost in the playoffs and it was really sad. And, we got home and, you know, they said, we're going to tweak the coaching staff a little bit. And um, your heart so sinks we every were time, like, I'm sure. We weren't sure what that meant. But, you know, Brian was, you know, always his, his same loyal and dedicated self, did his work, you know, um, and uh, seemed to be well liked and accepted and, you know, was a, a you know, a strong person in the group. And um, so the day after the season, like he always does, he went to the ballpark um, to, you know, wrap things up and all of that. And he said, he came back, he said, there wasn't really anybody there, you know, not too many people were there. And so the next day, I, I, I think I went to the dentist and he, he was just going to stay home. And then he called me, he said, and they've called me in, they want me to come to the ballpark. And so he went to the ballpark and he called me on the way home and said, I was the tweak. And I was like, what? And he said, yeah, they, um, they, you know, I'm, I'm um, not on. He just walked in. Say hi, Brian. Who are you with? Maria. Hi, Maria. Hey, how are you? Good. Nice good to, to see, see you. you. How's it going? Everything's good. I haven't seen good. you since Texas. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, I'm doing good. Everybody's good. Good. You doing okay? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good, you know, just good. in my kitchen. Well, that's all right. That's, we're all learning to do that. <laughs> you know, really quickly, because I want to keep talking to your wife. I, I remember a couple different press conferences. You kept saying how much you like watching Yellowstone. Yes. Now my fiance won't get off the show. He loves oh, the really? show and he wants me to watch it. Oh, no. Uh, my, uh, my son came home 
from when we were all done. And he's like, he's up there binge watching season three right now. Cause I, and I told him, I was, I was like, you got plenty of time. Cause this thing isn't going to come out again until next fall. I mean, next spring or summer or whatever. So now I'm waiting for show. the, uh, I got onto the Vikings too. What, what's that on? What's Vikings. That on? It was a show on history channel. Okay. Is it Tell like him when he's done with Yellowstone to go to watch Vikings? He'll like that one too. Listen, you guys would be best friends. That's like his, that's his genre. <laughs> his channel, Discovery Channel, like yeah, any of yeah. those channels. He's all into that. So no, I'm not, I'm I got you. I got you. Well, good. Well, it's good to see you. I'll leave good you Good to see alone. you too. Right, bye. <laughs> bye. Okay. He just ruined your story. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was, you know, so that then, you know, it was like, what, what do you do? What do we do now? You yeah. know, like uh, the the go and look, you know, offers from other teams or, um, but we were, you know, here and everything was good and he couldn't imagine being anything but a brave. I mean, that's how it's been for, for forever, which yeah. is so great. And it's great for you guys because the continuity is so rare, especially in this business, you right. know, to, to be with a team as long as he has. Did you go to every, I mean, I know the obvious answer to this, whenever you were working and when the kids were in school, you couldn't go to every game, but did right. you try to make it to, to most of them? Well, in, when we were in the minor leagues, that was our day to day, you okay. know, like you went to the ball game and you, you know, we had, they had their friends at the ballpark and, you know, adults that they interacted with and that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, they participated in everything. Troy was in the dugout from, I think he was five or six. Um, he would be down on the field with his dad and, you know, at the ballpark during the day, even when, you know, Aaron and I were, you know, out and about at home. So yeah, we were pretty much there every night. Maybe that, that was a little bit of a change. I don't think we went as much when we were in Atlanta because it was like 45 minutes to the ballpark, you know, sure. so, but um, yeah, we did a lot. <laughs> And the kids, did they, did they like it? Did they love it? Was it always, you know, it. they did? It was, it was, it's their way of life. You know, it's what they did. You know, our daughter would sing, take me out to the ball game. They put, you know, in the minor league cities, they'd put her up on a chair in front and give her a microphone <laughs> and she'd sing, you know, and uh, Troy, Troy used to, uh, with the Durham Bulls, you know, mm -hmm. the bull used to go out and do the YMCA and Troy would be out there doing it with him and doing flips. And I love the minor know. leagues. It's the best. <laughs> I know. And I, I was telling Brian this week, I worry that it's not, it's never going to be like I that know. again in the minor leagues. That's sad to me. I know, you know? this year. I'm so glad we tough. were able to experience that. You know, people are yeah. like, Oh, you were in the minor leagues for so long. That must've been terrible. And I'm like, no, it, it really wasn't. I'm so glad we got to experience that, you know, um, but I don't think that's going to be like that much anymore. I know. I, you know? I, I hope that they make it out. Okay. But man, this, this pandemic has been really tough on the minor leagues for sure. Right. Right. In addition to already being the changes being made in the minor leagues and then the pandemic has been awful. So. Now, have you, um, I know that you, you weren't necessarily interested in the beginning because Brian was a baseball player, but now it is your life. Are, were you always like into baseball or were you just kind of like, this is my life? Well, um, so I told you I grew up in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And um, in Pittsburgh, you know, they're really big into their sports teams. For sure. And I, I'm one of nine children. Wow. And our grandmother lived with us. She had been in a, she had been run over by a car. So she was an invalid and she was in a wheelchair. Oh my and gosh. so after dinner at night, we had a teeny tiny house. And so, you know, the kids are all over the place and <laughs> my mom's trying to finish dinner and stuff or, you know, clean up after dinner. And so I, I always said, if, if you were causing trouble or messing around inside the house, my dad would say, just go to bed. You know, y'all just go on to bed you're too crazy but my they would put my my grandmother out on the front porch with her in her wheelchair and they'd turn on the little yellow light so bugs wouldn't get her you know and they'd give her a transistor radio and she listened to the pirate games she loved wow. the pirates and so if i went out on the porch then my dad wouldn't see me and <laughs> send me to bed <laughs> so, so i hung out outside on the porch with my grandmother and listened to the pirate games so yeah i was you know a baseball fan 
I wouldn't say that I was as crazy as most people are or were at the time, you know, um, uh, about the Pirates. Um, but yeah, I always listened to baseball and knew about baseball, you know. Um, and maybe that was kind of the thing I was thinking, oh, I don't want to go out with this guy who's uh, going to have a girl in every city or, <laughs> yeah. you know, whatever my idea was of what it was going to be like, you know. Right. So. Um, well, you were pleasantly surprised it, by Brian. But it wasn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like that. <laughs> How did he win you over? Oh, you know what it was? Um, he, I, <laughs> so I was in Bradenton, Florida, and I was living in this little trailer. Yeah. And every time it would rain, those big giant palmetto bugs. You oh, know, they're disgusting. <laughs> they're so gross. It's like they the would come in. Instance. Oh, gosh. I can't talk about this. Continue. <laughs> They would come in and I was like, oh, I don't want to step on it here, crunch. And um, <sighs> so I would put a jar upside down on them and put books on them. And then when he would call and ask me if I wanted to go out, I'd say, well, yeah, sure, you can come up. You know, he's, after a while, he was like, is it like, I get, I get the okay whenever you have a bug underneath. <laughs> yep, that is exactly why you're allowed to come in. <laughs> yeah, so he... So he won me over by coming up and killing the palmetto bugs that came in when it rained. What a story. I love that. It's so funny. Here's your drinks. Have a supersonic day. Nick, in the morning, you don't even you don't even speak full words, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, Nick, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> All right. I don't look forward to any other drink like I do my morning drink. Sonic's Morning Drink Stop. Large drinks for 99 cents and large specialty drinks for $1.49 before 10 a.m. For contactless ordering and payment, order ahead in the Sonic app. Tax not included. See menu for details for a limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Mobile ordering available only at select locations. You know, now he is baseball's manager of the year in the National League. Was that, was that really cool for you to see happen for him? You mean a couple years ago or this time? This time. Couple, okay. A couple years ago, when what was that one? That was the baseball writers. Yep. And it was kind of like uh, we were in shock about that. I feel like Brian um, endears himself to them because he's truthful and he's he backs his players. You know, um, and that's what I read last week on some of the comments from people um, where Baseball America had interviewed some of the players and some people is, you know, they said he's uh, he runs the Braves like it's his family. And, you know, he he always has their back, even if they do something wrong. And he it's not that he doesn't. Is you know, I, I think because he was 26 years old managing a team of kids who were almost his age, um, he had to be like a dad early. And, yeah. you know, they were like our family. You lived with them for five or six months, whatever it was. And it is like your family. And, you know, I would take the wives and try to keep them, you know, think about that. There's 25 women or, you know, in the minor leagues, it wasn't that many. A lot of them sure. had girlfriends, not so much. Uh, they were married or had families until we got to AAA. But, you know, I would, you know, try to help them or you bring 25 women together from all walks of life who've been <laughs> raised all differently and you try to put them in one place together and they're supporting their husband individually and that and it's it can be kind of crazy you know and and so we had to do parenting type things all along with players and stuff you know and so you know when I read that last week that I think it might have been Dansby said, you know, he supports you even if you've messed up. But that doesn't mean he doesn't bring you in face to face and let you know what's acceptable and what isn't, you know. So, yeah, and I think I think probably all of his experiences in the minor leagues too exponentially helps when it comes to these guys that move up and down so much because you know how the major leagues are. You know, one minute you're up, one minute you're down. And I think that him having all of the experience he knows mm -hmm all walks of life in baseball now. Yeah, like he'll tell people, 
I've been recycled three times. <laughs> <laughs> recycled, you know? I like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and you know, in and in in that, he's experienced a lot of things with you know with his players, and you know, their births of their children, deaths of their parents, you yeah. know, all of that kind of stuff that people don't think about, you know, in baseball that you have to deal with those things, you know, but um, but. And, and oftentimes we were all drug into it. You know? Can you help with this? Or can you get the wife here or there? Or, you know, one time in Durham, you know, I get a call. One of the wives is in labor and she has no way to get to the hospital. So I take her to the hospital and I call him. This is before cell phones. And I call the ballpark and I get him. And i like, you got to get him home. Get him oh back to Durham. Gosh. You know? and so I'm in the... I'm in the delivery room with the wife and, you know, she's young and she's scared and she doesn't have her mom there. And, you know, she doesn't have her husband there. And were you a mom like, yet? And no, I wasn't. Oh my and, gosh. Um, yeah. And so he got him home and, you know, the doctor was a friend. It was the team OBGYN and he was a friend. And so, you know, he was like, you know, just come in with us, you know, till he gets here Well, the guy got there and, he came in and I left and went home and laid down in the bed. And I said, I can't, I can't leave him there. He looked like a deer in the headlight. <laughs> I can't leave him there. And a couple of minutes later, they called me and they said, we think we need you to come back. Oh my gosh. So you so went, back? went back mm -hmm, and I stood with the doctor while he did the uh, C-section. Oh my and, gosh. Uh, the poor dad was beside himself he you know he's on the baseball field one minute and then he's on a, a I think he came home on a bus came back on a bus if I remember properly probably my but yeah so I was there in the delivery of that child you know and and I had you know had never seen anything like that before you know and I was like oh my gosh this is incredible you know I was like yeah. if, if you're watching this like how can people not believe in God watching something like that happen you know so it was I was you know so it, that, those kinds of things you know and you you know it, it, that's what you did you know it's just you know you're... anything and everything is what you yeah. do yeah and I, I yeah. think you know too like do you know off the top of your head how many times you've moved? No, no, but here's <laughs> one thing. Here's one thing is that we always kept our house. When we moved here, mm -hmm. we moved into an apartment in Stone Mountain. And then right when our daughter was born, she's 30, she's going to be 34. She's okay. going to be 34. So right when I was pregnant with her, we moved into our first home. And we had that home for five years, and then we moved into another home that we had for 25 years wow. or 27 years. So we always had that as a home base. So that was That's much nice. different than a lot of people because people changed teams, you know, and and um, yep. and had to move and went to different places. I just had to move for six months, you know, or actually, I would just be in that apartment for three months, you know, for some, for over the summer. That's you know, nice wherever. to have a home base though, for sure. Because, yeah. you know, like Levi and I have moved in, in TV too. It's crazy. So like we've moved since we met four years ago, we've moved six times in four years oh. be between like him going to one job and then the next, and then me going to one job and then the next, then me moving. I mean, it's just been nuts. Six times in four years. And so I'm just oh, kind of wow. like, there's so no, you have two places now. Yeah, we do. And, and yeah. because he's not, um, they're division two. And so they didn't play this year. It's actually been a blessing for us because he's here every weekend. He just drives up to Atlanta and he's here every weekend, which is great. Um, other than that, our eyes are just crossed all the time and we just try to figure it out. I could literally talk to you all day, but I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one thing I really want to talk about is obviously this year is so crazy for everybody but for you guys specifically you went through spring training and then everything got pulled in the middle of spring training and things are crazy what was that time like in between when spring training ended to when you figured out you guys were going to be playing baseball again it was crazy it really was crazy you know it was a new place to be you know i mean uh, northport yeah and they had gotten us our a place we didn't see it before we went there anything ended up being right on the beach and it was incredible and it Perfect. was like 
you know, just unbelievable. And I, and I had people, you know, our normal people come down, you know, the kids came down for 10 days. I have girlfriends from Pittsburgh who come down. And so all of that, you know, I, I told my daughter was pregnant. I told her when, whenever my group of girlfriends leaves, then anytime after that, when you need me, I'll come home. Meaning, you know, Brian will still stay there and do the rest of spring training, but I'll come home. Well, it was right after the girls left when they said, you know, we're done, you know, everybody's done and everybody left. But we were like, well, we have this place, really, it was rented till April 4th and it was incredible. And so we were like, well, we'll just stay here and see what happens. You Mm -hmm. know, it was so up in the air. It was like, are we really, we'll be back playing in a couple weeks or, you know, we're going to be playing by the end of April, you know, and it just kept like that but anyway um so i told aaron i said listen if you're okay we're gonna stay for a little while so it was okay for a couple weeks until she started having trouble getting food Mm -hmm. um you know and getting toilet paper and all the you know the stuff she was having trouble still pregnant at that point she was pregnant had these (laughs) twin boys that are now not in school you know so she was homeschooling she was doing really well um, and so we, we stayed until she was having trouble getting food. So we loaded up the car with fresh fish and everything that we bought down there and headed home and we came home and it was like, this is so weird. Like, what do we do now? But pretty quickly they started to try to interpret what was coming from the CDC and you know World Health and, and 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 all the guidelines they were getting you know to MLB, right? And right away Brian started to do the Zoom calls and there would be, you know, most of the day he would spend you know going through how is that whatever they're telling you now how is that going to relate to baseball Alex and and Brian and several of the people really, you know, worked hard on making this whole thing happen. But the one really good thing was that the baby was born April 10th and they weren't going to be here. Neither Troy nor Brian were going to be here for the baby, you know, for the baby's birth. So we were able to be here for the, for the baby, baby's birth. You know, he was able to be here. And um, what we did was when she went, to go to the hospital, she dropped the twins here. So we had the twins for a week and she was at the hospital, had the baby, and then was able to go home and adjust to the new baby without the craziness of all of us involved, you know, and we were doing the quarantining from each other and, you know, and being really careful with all of that. We were able to introduce the boys one by one to the baby. And we were the, you know, one was with us and one was with them. And so it just offered us a lot of family time. That That you would have never gotten. gotten. No. Um, You know, so when you look, if you, if there's, And, you know, people will look at what happened, you know, what came good from this pandemic. And, you know, often people say, you know, gosh, I can't, I've been in the house with my family forever. Sure. But it it really offered us something that we hadn't had. You know, Brian had never been in this house in April and May, you know, like May, April, May, and June. He was like, oh, is that how you do those flowers? (laughs) (laughs) And we ate meals together, which isn't a common thing, you know, we were able to eat meals together. And, but I was amazed that, you know, how much went into getting things set up to be able to, um, to start that season. You know? I just remember constantly, me constantly thinking, how the heck is this going to happen? Like, how is this going to work? So I'm sure for you guys, who were directly in it and, you know, Brian's going to work every day. He's around the players every day. Were you guys nervous in the beginning? We were probably more afraid of infecting him, you know, being so clean here because he was going to be going in there around, you know, everybody. And when we first had that first outbreak, you know, or that first little scare with Miami, it was kind of like, oh, this isn't going to work. I'd say, 
well, instead of ordering groceries, I'm going to go to the grocery store. And then I'd be like, no, no, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the one on the news saying <laughs> he brought down baseball. <laughs> It was all because of you, because <laughs> you went to Publix. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just worried about that. It worked out. I mean, to a degree, it worked out, and, and baseball was able to manage, and another great run by the Braves, which I know was really fun for you to be there, wow. too, and, and Texas was, was a blast, huh? We were just here all the time until I went flew to Arlington, and then, you know, we got to Arlington, and we couldn't, I mean, we our seats were out by the foul pole in left field. We could see the other wives down there, you know, in front. And we, and I, I want, everybody said one night, oh, Ronnie, we saw Brian waving to you. You got to see him. And I said, I said to Brian, <laughs> so you saw where I was sitting? And he goes, no. He said, I was just waving up there, hoping that. Oh my you know, gosh. <laughs> so he's waving around. So we never saw each other the whole time we were in Arlington. That's, you know? hilarious. That's actually really funny because you know crazy. how many times you see Freddie wave to Chelsea? Yeah. You can actually see them. Right. But <laughs> so and he would funny. walk up to the fence, you know. We sure, would sure, see sure. him walk up to the fence and a couple of the other guys walk up to the fence. But we were way up oh and God. way, you know, we were down by the foul pole. <laughs> At least he didn't lie to you. At least he the was like, Bronx actually, was I had like... no idea where you were. I was just kind of waving around and hoping. Waving around. <laughs> Gosh, that's so funny. When I say game seven, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Jeez, I don't even know. Um, it, it was, it was disappointing. Um, but at the same time, every game was like, holy crap, you know, like we're one game from the World Series, you know, and we're not supposed to be here, you yeah. know. And so every game was just like, you know, we're not supposed to be here, but wow, we, you know, we are, you know. So, yeah, it was kind of, you know, it's hard even to remember now because <laughs> As so much happened, you know, so fast. But um, yeah, I I think it was just like I can't, I, we can't believe we're even here. You know, look where we are, and and you know we've had all this adversity, and still the guys are playing their hearts out. You know, um, I think that's probably Troy coming now. That you're here. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> so he going into the podcast, he barging right in. <laughs> <laughs> we have the whole family here. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, obviously it was difficult, but the Braves clearly have something really fun going. This is a great team. There's a lot of youth, but there's some really good veterans now. Oh, yeah. Do you love how exciting this team is right now? Yes. And, you know, it, it just, it, it's just like keeps getting better. You know, like I think Alex work, is working really hard to uh, move it forward. And, and uh, here's Troy. Say hi, Troy. Hello. <laughs> hi. I can't see you, but hello. This, this is Maria. Hi, Maria. Hi, your mom's on a podcast. I'm on a podcast? Yeah, she's on a podcast right now. Oh, nice. So I'm on a podcast? Yeah, come say hello. Yeah, you're, I mean, you don't have to be. I'm just saying, hey, I'm recording it, but I'll cut some stuff up. So, hey. Okay. Any questions for me? Any questions <laughs> for him? I, I was just telling Was your mom a good baseball wife? A traveling My mom baseball? is the baseball wife. <laughs> that, seriously, that's why I told he her. Should... I said, because she your should dad write a is a book. She, I could talk to her for literally days, but I told her, I said, you know, Brian is she a baseball lifer. <laughs> no, I'm glad. No, she's, she said you guys loved your childhood, did you? Loved it. We would, we, would, we would pack up the van. She would have it packed our last day of school, pick us up from school, and we were out. And we literally pulled into the house the night nine before. o'clock the night before the first day of school every year don't you didn't you love that I we took a so we fun. took a shower <laughs> in, in a beach uh public like the you know like it when just, you come off the beach yes. and there's like a shower right there yeah we showered in those before getting in the van to come, to home. come home the day I before i am school obsessed started. with this why was this my <laughs> life i like it's like the van life i like this it was crazy it was crazy and then it, 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 it oftentimes people talk about yeah, i should write a book and i have enough from <laughs> be great. opening day 
opening day stories. I have opening day stories that people can't hardly believe, you know, just okay, tell me what <laughs> crazy, crazy. You can't just thing bring that up and then be like, yeah, I've got a great story, but I'm not going to tell you, it was, I'm save them for my book. <laughs> just give it me was one. crazy. It was crazy. Um, you know, just, uh, being, dragging kids in, you know, that I'd get there and it would be like, Okay, I'm the manager's wife. You know, I I, mean, I need to park. Did you tell them about, Mer about Myrtle Beach? Which one? When we opened it? Oh, God, that was crazy. Oh, no. I'll tell you that one. That was okay. crazy. That's a good okay. one. Yeah, wait, wait, one. wait. What about the parking? I need to hear about the parking. Oh, well, We're going to go know, back to Myrtle would, Beach. I would come in and, you know, you'd pull up to the, to the wherever, you know, they were, you know, parking you, you know, like where the guy was collecting the money or whatever. And I'd say, wait, I'm the, you didn't I'm, have your own spot. What is this? Well, no, I'd come in and I'd say, <laughs> I'm the manager's wife or I'm Brian Snicker's wife. And they'd say, who's Brian Snicker? You know? Stop it. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, you know, like, uh, and, and I'd, <laughs> And, and I'd be in the line of a million people and oh, I, you know, I've got two kids and I've got them dressed in their little baseball outfits. You, know? <laughs> you have to park on the back thing, you know, he'd come out and he'd say, where? And I say, oh, I, I need somebody to walk me out because I'm at the very end, you know, at the, oh, at the back of the parking lot. And he'd be like, what, you know, but he would have so much stuff to get ready, you know, that he you didn't want to know, bother him. Yeah, and that's, an, that's another thing that's really weird about Brian and the Braves is that we opened almost every one of this, the only ballpark we didn't open, like, you know, they opened new minor league ballparks. The only one we didn't open was Rome. Wow. We, you know, so what he was talking about in Myrtle Beach. So, like I said, we would go on Friday and we would get, an, get the apartment and I'd get everything set up in the apartment. Well, we get to Myrtle Beach and um, they don't have, it's not ready. I mean, the, the stadium was just being built and it was not ready. It was oh definitely gosh. not ready. There was no carpet in the clubhouse. The lockers weren't set up. Brian's office wasn't set up. The, the, they had a store, you know, the, the clubhouse store that was this beautiful store. It had nothing set up in it. And so we stayed up, we got there, we stayed up all night, my kids too. They said, do you know how Brian wants his office set up? And I was like, no. Do you know how he wants the clubhouse set up? And I said, no. But I said, but Troy, he was like six or seven. Yeah. Oh I said, gosh. no, let's see. No, he might've been older than that, maybe nine. He knows. So Troy goes in and he works overnight, getting the clubhouse set up, getting all the stuff where it's supposed to be. They put Erin in the store. She was tagging the clothes, hanging the clothes on the hangers, putting them up. And I was kind of going between doing all this stuff. We spent the night, spent all night doing it. The next day, when they, they're coming in, the team's coming in. Oh, my God. Troy and I are in the clubhouse. They just laid the carpet, and we're vacuuming the carpet to get, <laughs> you know. And finally, they come in, and they say, Ronnie, you got to go out because the guys are coming in. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's not ready. So, and then. so crazy. The day before the game, it was um, maybe an hour before the game started we realized we have no trash cans. Oh my like, gosh. No like trash anywhere? cans for the stadium. Yeah. So I have to go to Sam's Club and buy trash cans. Are you kidding? <laughs> it was, did you volunteer? Oh, we just went in and it was just what we did, you know, like get everything ready for baseball to start, you know? And so we just, and and how Joyce, many people in Myrtle Beach knew that you put out those trash cans? Probably oh. zero. I don't know the people who were working there and yeah I mean it wasn't like they were slacking it was you know they were running out of time you yeah know, they just ran out of time they didn't have enough people to do what they had to do and so <laughs> there there we were all night long putting up you know putting all this stuff together it was the craziest Gosh. thing and and then Brian comes in and he's like, oh wow, this is really looks great, nice. guys. <laughs> We're like, you have no idea what we just went through. I'm curious. I just have a couple more questions and then I'll let you go. Okay. Um, 
you know, one of the things that I think is interesting and that differs from every coach's wife or manager's wife, um, in your case, is that everyone is different after wins and losses, right? You know, everybody has a different vibe, a different personality. I feel like, I feel like maybe, and I could be wrong, but Brian seems like he's pretty even keel a lot of the times. Is that kind of how he is at the highs and the lows? Yeah. Um, doesn't really bring it home. Um, never has. Um, so I'll tell you why he doesn't bring it home. Okay. Tell me. Because he talks to himself on the way home. On the way home. (laughs) So I would, I, I here's Troy. Oh, you already said me. Hello. What's up? So I would ride with him our whole life, or my whole Your life. Your whole life. On the way home. <laughs> yeah. And I, oh, are you talking to me or not? <laughs> and he's talking to himself. He talks to himself. He goes through everything himself. So yeah. by the time he gets home, he's already, he's so already he's talked, talked it out. out. He's good he's to go. So yeah. even if it's like, you know, the worst situation ever, he just talks to himself about it. And he's like, all right, yeah. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does. Sometimes he talks to a couple friends on the way home. Um, you know, he'll, if I if I see that he's pulled up in the driveway, but he's not coming in, I know he's talking to somebody on the phone. And then he comes in, and it's pretty much what he comes in now. He comes in. He's got a, the plate of food. He stands at the counter and eats, and then he's done. He's done. I mean, he just right to bed. Leaves and it. The second he hits the pillow, he's done. But then he'll wake up later or say he was up later, you know, worried about something or thinking about something or getting ready to talk to somebody, talking to himself. So I used to make, I used to make fun of him for doing it. Did you? And then my, and and then my first day of coaching, you did it. I was on the way home (laughs) and I started talking to myself and I called him. I said, I'm sorry. (laughs) I love that. But see, don't you feel better now? You had yourself to talk to on the way home. Yeah. I was doing the same thing. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) It's so hard to kind of sum up what it's like to be a manager's wife, I'm sure, right? But what do you feel like is your favorite part of this life that you live, this crazy life that you live? What's your favorite part? Well, the the very best part is that we can do it as a family. That's, you know, it's like who can go to their husband's job with them? you know, and, and, and be a part uh, and feel like you're part of, you know, the people talk about the Braves family, you know, and, and the Braves way and those kinds of things. And it really is all about family that we get to do everything as a family. And it's, you know, it's just our way of life. Are you guys going to win a world series? You know, um, I've been going through, um, the downstairs had all this stuff for 40 years was uh, every year at the end of the the season we would you know you'd have a box of the stuff from the season and we put it in the attic and we put it in the attic and we put it in the attic so the attic was full i don't even know how the attic even stood up so (laughs) when we moved it went into storage for four or five years or four years by the time we got over here and um then it was downstairs and we got this part of the house together but all of that was just down there so in the pandemic that's what i started to do so i've gone through just about every box down there and seriously it's like a museum wow because we have stuff for 45 years and you know old baseball stuff you wouldn't even believe i mean i have this high school baseball uniform i mean just oh i love that um and so i'm in the process of getting those things put up and ready. Well, one of the things I come across, and I wish I could put my hand on it right now, but it's a bumper sticker. It's from way, way back. And it says, wait until this year, wait until this year. Like, you know, this is going to be the year. So, so I brought it up the other day. I was going to try to put it onto a piece of wood or something to hang it on that Christmas tree. Wait till this year, you know, this year. This I guess maybe be now year. that you found it, this is the year. This is the year. Yeah. Listen, Ronnie. Wouldn't if that the be Braves, so incredible? If the Braves win the World Series, I am going to call your cell phone and I'm going to say, <laughs> you need to mount that bumper sticker in a museum. <laughs> right the museum. Wait till this year. Wait till this oh, year. Oh, gosh. That gives me a good feeling now. I know. It's going to be this year, huh? It would be Brian. great. Uh, it would be so, so crazy. Um, that would just be, but 
as far as we've come and the changes really, you know, in the last couple of weeks and the addition and knowing that those guys, what they did when we weren't a hundred percent, um, was what we could do when we're a hundred percent, you know, this so. is a fun team that you guys have going. It's a special team. And, and thanks to the bumper sticker, the Braves could win a world series wait till this year. Has the old like little emblem on it. Wait till this year though. You know? I love that. Yeah. Well, Ronnie, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. I took so much of it, but I could honestly talk to you for days because you have over four <laughs> decades of experience in baseball. So Crazy I really, stuff. really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, seriously, I lost complete and total control of that interview, but of course, in the best possible way. We talked for almost two hours and then we even texted a little bit afterwards. So of course we had to condense this podcast, but really, you know, I could just keep talking to her all day. Great people producing great baseball and seriously, it gives me the chills to think that Ronnie Snicker could be the reason that the Braves potentially win a World Series. All right, next up, because you know, I always reveal the next guest on this show, Joni Crean, her husband, Tom Crean, well known in the basketball world and currently the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs basketball team. You talk about somebody with no filter and a bear all conversation, that would be Joni. Excited for you guys to hear that one. I know you can't wait, but you're going to have to. Right now, we are just going to have to put that on pause until we release episode three. For now, thanks for listening. Have a happy holiday season. And this is Married to the Game.